Let's break down the same arrow first. Let's break down this one, just because it's a smaller formula. Okay. Hmm. Now, to break it down, we're going to put a P on the right-hand side. Mm -hmm. And P implies Q will be on the left-hand side, another one. But now that's a worry. <coughs> I will draw this up and you might want to cross it out. This is something will imply P and Q implies Q will imply something. We've broken this one up into these two. Now this R has to go somewhere. It'll probably go over here. But we've got this P over here. You want to put this P up here? That's fine. But then over here, we've got P implies Q implies Q implies R. That's not going to give us R, is it? It's going to, we're going to be short of something. In fact, we're going to be short of a Q. We need to have P implies Q implies Q implies R will give us a Q implies R. We have Q implies R to be R, we're going to need a Q. Now we don't have a Q lying around loose, but we do have a P implies Q. So we have a P running around loose, that will give us a Q. Now maybe it's a couple of steps too far ahead, I'm not sure how much of this natural deduction from here you've got in your head. So you could go with this, and we can break this down, but I can tell you now it's going to go a little bit sideways. Let's just do that next couple of steps, and we'll see why we need to go sideways. Let's break this arrow down now. So P implies Q will be at the end of the, of a, of the conclusion, and Q implies R will be the premise. R has to go one of these two, let's put the R here. P implies Q is over here, that's good. P implies Q implies P implies Q, that's done. Mm -hmm. Now we need to prove R from Q implies R. And that's not going to work. So we kind of need this extra Q over here. So we wanted to copy a Q. But we've never had a Q by itself to copy. So we can't do this. Maybe it's unprovable, but we've got this Q implies Q over here. If we had another copy of that and stuck it up here, then if we had a P, we'd get a Q which would give our R. If we had another copy of this P implies Q and another copy of this P, it might be useful. So we sort of go ahead, we see we run out of letters, we go back, we try to copy again. Is anyone following my rants? I got a few. So we're looking for a cube, we can't find one, but if we had separate colour, I guess, let us use a real separate colour for separate colour, that'll be interesting. Six blue pens, nothing else. Just that up one. Thanks. So if we had a P implies Q from here, another copy of that, that would be useful. And if we had another copy of this P from over here, P would give us the Q, would give us the R, and would be okay. We could break this down in some way. In fact, an awful lot like what we did earlier. So if we can copy another one of these and another one of these, then we're sweet. So you can't necessarily see ahead, but you can go forwards, crash, and go backwards. So we need to copy this P over here before we split it. And then once we split, we're going to need to copy this P arrow Q. So, sorry, I was planning to finish that one, not to go sideways on it. So we used up a bit of space there that wasn't ideal. This is our first time, we're going to copy our P because you can see we're going to need it a couple of times. And everything else is going to stay the same because you only get to do one rule on a line, so we just copy it. And now we're going to do the thing we did before, which is breaking down this arrow, which has P being a conclusion somewhere, and P implies Q being a premise somewhere. One of our P's will go up here to match that off. We still have another P we can stick over here. And we have this long formula here, P implies Q implies Q implies R. 
And then this conclusion needs to go somewhere. It'll go over here. So this was, we broke down an arrow on the left. That one's done. Now we've got our P implies Q, and from our plan we needed a copy of that. So we're going to copy this next. P implies Q implies Q implies R. And our P, we want two copies of P implies Q. And from that we're going to prove R. Let's hope this works. Now we're going to split something up. What are we going to split up? We're going to split up this big beast over here. I think. No, it was, hmm. yes, we'll split this up. So this means the bit before the arrow will go as a conclusion, and the bit after the arrow will go as a premise of the other equation, other um, inference. We've got a P we need to put on one of these sides. Oh, we've got a P and Q, put a P and Q over here. That's done, so that means this P must go over here, and this P implies Q must go over here, and our R will put over here. So this is our plan that we had up here in our black and blue, it's now all blue. If we can prove this, and it feels like it can, then we should be good. Now we have some arrows on the left. I guess this was an arrow on the left we got rid of. Put another arrow on the left. Let's break down this P implies Q. Why? We already have a P that matches. We could break this one down, but let's break this one down to match up our P's. So this says our P has to be the conclusion of something, and this says our Q has to be one of our premises of something. So let's put our other sphere premise P up here, our other Q implies R premise over here, and our conclusion over here. So these are all choices in how to rearrange, mm -hmm. but hopefully when it gets to this small, and we already had what did we had? We had this P and this Q. We put all our P's over here and everything else over here, sort of breaking off a letter at a time. So P is done, and we're down to this thing that we know is true, Q, and if Q then R, therefore R. And we're going to split on the left. This Q becomes something implies Q. This R becomes R implies something. Our Q will be a premise on one of these two. We'll put it here. This R will be a conclusion on one of these two. We'll put it here. During the break, you can pick up your exams from me, tests, and you can fill in your um, questionnaires. We'll meet back at five past.